Hey you guys, what's up? It's Rocket House 54 here, and welcome to my list for the worst films of 2020. Um, this is going to be an actual top 10 list this year. Finally! I actually don't remember if my 2018 list was a top 10 or not, but I remember last year my list was only a top 5. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited that I actually have a top 10 list for what I think is the first time ever. Um, there's going to be no uh, dishonorable mentions. Um, really, there's just 10 movies that you know I didn't really like. I'm not the the hardest person to please, but at the same time, I'm also not the easiest. So even these movies, a fair amount of them I didn't even hate. They're just ones that I didn't like, and obviously I'm going to explain why. Uh, so let's get things started with my number 10 pick, which is Sonic the Hedgehog. I don't really have a huge reason to dislike this other than it's not a movie made for me. You know, it's not a movie made for my age demographic. It's clearly a movie made for kids. And in that regard, I think it succeeds decently well. Um, but I also thought that they just didn't take enough chances with the comedy and with the action. Like, I know it's a kid's movie, but you can... They could have still tried a little harder. Um... But yeah, I, I thought this was going to be like a lot more fun than it was, and there's also like um, some really, there's some really, really weird editing choices as well. Um, like, like a lot of the, a lot of the editing in some places is like really fast paced, and it makes you feel as if like certain scenes just go by in a flash, and you're just like, wait, what? Like nothing even happened, and now they're already moving on to the next thing. Um, yeah, as I said, didn't really care for this one, but not really a movie for me. Number nine is The New Mutants. This was a movie I was so, so, so excited for when I first heard the idea, you know, like, you know, kind of a, kind of like an X-Men film that is, like, kind of horror-driven. I was excited as hell for this, and yeah, it was, it, it, it was, it wasn't very good. It, you know, it, it should have taken a lot more chances than it did. I would have really liked to see way more of like the the horror scenes in it. I did think there was uh, some good performances and there was some good ideas on display, but really I just thought that this could have been done so much better. Like yes, I get it's an origin story, but really like if you don't make an origin story interesting, then why are we going to care for anything that, of what's going to come in the future? And I also apparently heard that uh, the reshoots that were supposed to happen uh, apparently didn't happen. You know, I because, you know, this movie had so many delays that they were going to do, like, reshoots and stuff. And apparently they never happened, which sucks because, I mean, don't get me wrong, I didn't want this movie to be delayed for a 14th time. But, you know, I would have liked a better movie than what we got, you know. You know, a lot of potential, but sadly missed opportunity. And coming in at number 8 is Brahms The Boy 2. Honestly, I was expecting this to be a lot worse, because I absolutely downright hated the first movie so, so much. Like, when I found out they were making a second one, I was like, oh my god, why? The first one sucked. Like, who asked for a sequel to this movie? But, as I said, it wasn't nearly as bad as the first one. It's not as shove it down your throat in the first one, but like with the other two movies on this list that I already mentioned, where it fails is it just, it doesn't take chances. Like, I don't even remember a whole lot from the first one, but I remember it being, like, so unscary to the point that it was astonishing, and this movie's not really any different. I think it's a little scarier than the first one, but not necessarily all... That's not necessarily, like, you know, a huge compliment or anything. You know, it's it's very bland, too, and the ending's, like, really, really weird and just kind of disregards everything in the first movie. But this film does have a really hilarious scene involving a game of croquet that had me in stitches. Coming in at number 7 is To All the Boys, P.S. I Still Love You. This was really, really disappointing. I really wanted to like this because I really enjoyed the first movie a lot. I loved how they really spent time with the characters and made them really likable and enjoyable and funny. 
this sequel did not feel right. It really seemed like the director didn't even give a shit. Like, I could tell there was a lot of passion and heart put into the first movie. This movie had none of that. It really didn't. It... And there's so much of nothing going on in this movie, and then when important things do happen, they happen way too late, and the film doesn't focus on them nearly enough. And there's barely any comedy in it, it's boring, it has no charisma, and it really feels like just a wasted sequel, like a sequel that shouldn't have even been made. Like, I feel like there's a lot you can do with this story, but they just chose so many wrong turns. I really hope that the third film will be better, which is supposedly coming out in 2021. Let's hope that that still happens. Coming in at number six is Antebellum. Oh boy, okay. I am just... Okay, to give you an idea, the first 40 minutes of this movie is a dream sequence. Spoilers, I don't care. This is a worse movies list. Don't watch any of these. The first 40 minutes of this movie are a dream sequence, and the movie's 100 minutes long. That's almost half the runtime. Like, ugh, sorry, I just had to get my feelings about the opening to this movie out of, out of my system, because I'm just astonished that that's what they decided to do. Like, in this movie, it feels like there's three movies in one, and that none of them are properly expanded upon. Like, the elements of the story are actually pretty cool, but you never get to see them fully formed, and then finally, when everything does run together, it ends up feeling really, really weird. I really haven't seen a movie this unfocused in a long time. Like, I, I mean, I don't really recommend you see this, but in case you think I'm joking about the first 40 minutes being a dream sequence and then you're introduced to the main character, go watch it! You'll see that I'm not kidding! And number five is Capone. After Josh Trank, well actually it wasn't even his fault, I was gonna say after his career got destroyed with Fant Four Stick, you know, I don't think anybody really cared to see another movie from him, but he did, and it was a biopic, I think? I mean, because I think a lot of this ended up like wasn't really true to Al Capone's real story, but I, I don't know, I'm not quite sure, but uh, yeah, he decided to make this movie, and, you know, it, it, it wasn't good either, but I do think he has potential in him. Like, I've seen some people say that this seems like Josh Trank's build-up to making a straight-up horror movie, which I would love to see what he does there, because I think he does have it in him. Like, this movie I thought was really, really bland for the most part until the last half hour or so, and... Really, the whole movie was just too weird. You know, like, I don't even really know whether to praise Tom Hardy's performance or rip it to shreds. Like, his the voice he speaks in is so weird, and just the, the writing is so, again, weird. I'm just like, as I'm watching it, I'm like, what in the hell is going on? Like... Ugh, it, it was definitely uh, an odyssey to watch. I also thought that the editing and the, especially the CGI blood they use in some scenes was really, really terrible. And coming in at number four is The Grudge. You know, when I, when I saw the trailer for this, I thought they're going to make a good Grudge movie. It's finally going to happen. They're finally going to make a good one. But how they managed to make something worse than the previous three really blows my mind. Like, you know, at first I actually thought that the first American remake was okay, but I rewatched it a few months ago and I actually thought it was quite bad, and two and three are not any better. With this one, well, the acting is terrible. It's, it's laughable at points, honestly. Like, I'm not kidding when I say that there's some parts in this movie where the acting is delivered with the enthusiasm of the Bill Belichick and his son joke in that one episode of Family Guy. I'm not kidding, some of it is really like that. What else, what else? Um, the film's also really boring, there's not nearly enough scares in it, especially for a grudge movie, because I'll be honest, I haven't even seen the original Japanese film, but uh, I've heard it's supposed to be like I've heard it's supposed to be actually really scary. Um, 
yeah, I do really want to see it, but yeah, like, I would think with characters like these that have really, that have, like, um, a big, uh, legacy and, like, have scared quite a few people, you'd think that it's not that hard to make an actual scary movie with this, but it is. And also, there's just way too much exposition and way too many side plots, and the characters from the side plots never even meet. Like, you would think that maybe John Cho and Andrea Riseborough's characters would actually meet in the film, but they don't. And there's some parts where you think, oh, okay, that makes sense, or that's how that happened, but it just comes off as it trying to be way, way smarter than it is. I really don't know how you can mess up a grudge movie this badly. And coming in at number three is a film I own, actually. And that is Tremors Shrieker Island. Holy shit, this movie pissed me off. Now, I like the Tremors movies. I've seen all of them. I think one and two are really good. Two is actually my favorite one. Uh, three is good. I didn't really like four all that much, but it's miles better than this. Um, five is all right. It's like teetering on I don't like it territory, but it has some things in it that just push it over the edge. And uh, A Cold Day in Hell, which is the sixth one, I actually thought was pretty good and kind of a bit unfairly hated on. I enjoyed that. It's not hard to make a Tremors movie enjoyable, especially if you've seen the other ones in the franchise. It's not that hard. And this is from the same director as 5 and 6, so you know he... I mean, especially if you like those movies, you think, oh, you know, he, he, he probably has something up his sleeve. I don't know how you make a Tremors movie so bland and uncharismatic and uneventful. John Heater is boring as shit in this movie. Ugh, and the ending pisses in the face of every... Tremors fan. I was like wanting to scream at my TV by the end of this. I <sighs> Don't even watch this if you're the most dedicated Tremors fan. You won't like it. Like makes me think this is going to be the last one, but if they make another one, I'm really really wondering how they're going to make it due to the ending. Oh my god. I I'm sorry. I just I can't believe they chose to end it like this. Like, what the hell? Coming in at number two is Underwater. I don't even remember much from this movie. I The one thing I mostly remember is that there is literally no character development at all. You get, like, five seconds. I mean, not five seconds, like, five minutes. And then after that, you're just immediately thrown into the situation the characters are, and you don't even know anything about them as people. Now, you can start a movie off, like, right to the point and have it done well. Like, in Split, you know, that movie kind of gets right to the point, but you learn more about the characters as the movie goes on. That's an example of it doing it well, but this film doesn't do that. They just expect you to care about these characters. Like, what the hell? I don't. Um, yeah, and, and the movie, as I've said this with a lot of movies on this list, but the movie was really, really, really really boring. Like, I could not wait for this one to be over. Um, yeah, as I said, I don't even really remember much from this movie. I mean, that, that's the thing. A lot of these movies are forgettable <laughs> for good reason. But yeah, don't watch Underwater. And coming in at number one, 365 Days. I'm actually not sure how many people will know about this movie because... On Letterboxd, it's fairly popular, and on Netflix, my god, I think it was, like, number one in the country for a little bit, and it was in the top ten for a really long time. But then again, I, a lot of the people I follow on Letterboxd have not watched it. I think only, like, one out of the 30 people that I follow has actually seen it. Uh, this is a Polish movie, I'm pretty sure. And, okay... Normally, under any other circumstance, I would have put Underwater at number one because I hated watching it so much. But the reason why I put 365 Days at number one, because this movie is... It's so damn enjoyable. It really is. Like, when I was watching this, I was laughing my 
ass off. Like, I was put in such a good mood watching this movie. But the reason I put it at number one is because, you know, at least with the other movie, the other nine movies I put on this list, at least they understand how to make a movie. At least, I mean, except for Underwater, I guess. At least the other ones understand somewhat how to make a movie. This movie is an embarrassment to film. That is why I put it at number one. It's enjoyable as all hell, but it really is an embarrassment. Like, there's... The acting is so terrible. <laughs> the direction is laughable. So laughable. Like, there's certain scenes... There's one scene in particular on a boat that is just so laughably directed... So damn cheesy, really weird editing, too. Um, the story is dumb and makes no sense. The opening scene is just illogical. I didn't even notice it at first, but then I saw something that somebody else posted and I just started laughing. It has, like, such a glaring continuity error that you may not actually think about when you first see it. But you may see, like, posts after, and you'll be like, oh my god, that's so stupid. Like, the opening scene's so illogical, the ending is just straight up dumb. Like, <laughs> guys, I cannot recommend that you watch 365 Days enough. This movie is so damn enjoyable and so funny. I highly recommend it. I think it's still on Netflix. Please go watch it, but don't watch any of the other movies on this list. Um, anyway guys, that's gonna be it for this video. Um, subscribe for more content, please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. Um, let me know in the comments what your picks for the worst movies of 2020 were. Uh, and remember you guys, whenever making really dumb, illogical choices, say no to drugs.